Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our initial setup of server and we're going to take a look at how do you set up your host name and how do you get some basic DNS set up uh, as well as some of the basic settings that you have uh, within the server itself. So uh, in the last screencast I talked about uh, how to set up server and we ended with uh, being in the server tab here and having uh, a basically a local server set up with strictly file sharing and those are the only things that are set up. So today what I want to do is show you how to set up your host name and not only uh, your host name but get some basic DNS set up so that you can uh, begin to use your server the way you want. Uh, you'll notice right now there is no DNS service set up down here uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a basic setup uh, in a future screencast, I'll walk you through the details of how to set up the DNS service in a, a little bit more advanced way. Uh, but we're just going to start right here with the host name itself. So uh, right here you can see we've already got uh, some help about how to access your server over the internet. It'll give you a, a tutorial on how to do that. You can see here we've got our computer name as well. And we can edit both of these, but we're going to start with editing the host name because this is going to take us through a wizard on how to get this set up. So if I just click edit right here, uh, you'll notice that a drop down comes down and change host name shows up. Now, this is the same change host name service if you've used Mountain Lion Server at all that automatically shows up when you're doing a clean install of server uh, and walks you through the process. So, this is a, a very similar thing to that. And you'll see that it's already evaluated uh, everything and we're ready to go. So, we're just going to click next. And so here we have the choice of how we want to access our server. And this is really going to determine uh, what our host name will be. Uh, so let me just break this down a little bit. First, you have a local network where you can access your server just on the local network only. And that means your host name is going to end in .local. That means you can't access uh, your server outside your network. You can only do it within your home. And so if you just want basic file sharing and those types of things, uh, this would be the one that you would choose. Uh, you also have the option of local network and VPN. And basically what this does is you would put a .private at the end instead of .local uh, of your host name. And I'll show you what that looks like. And what this uh, gives you is it gives you the added advantage of using VPN, which is a virtual private network, where you can lo log in through that VPN uh, connection on the outside of your network to get to your server when you're away from home. And so that gives you that added uh, functionality. Now, you can't access any of the other services unless you've started VPN first. So uh, it does have its limits. But if you just want to you know, get back to some of your files and some uh, of the services only over VPN, then you would do a dot .private. Now, the final is a domain name. And this is where uh, if you want to access all of the services on the Internet without having to use VPN first uh, and all of that, then you would register a domain name on the Internet. Uh, where you would go to uh, a domain registrar and you would actually register a .com or a .net or something like that. And then that would allow uh, most of your services here to be, uh, pretty much all of them, to be accessible outside uh, your home network so that you wouldn't have to VPN in first. You can just expose those services so that you can have access to them. So in this case, what I'm going to do is set up a domain name just to show you how that works. If you wanted to know more about how to register a domain name, uh, you've got these nice little uh, help arrows here. You know, if I just click on that, you can see the little help window uh, comes up here, and then it tells you how to obtain a domain name. Now, I'm going to uh, walk you through how to do that uh, in, a, uh, in a future screencast. Uh, but for now, I just want to show you how to set up the host name and how, uh, how that works. And then uh, later, I'll show you how to get the domain name. So we're going to do the domain name and click Next. Now it takes us to this screen about connecting to our server. And what you would do then is enter your computer name. And so that's whatever you want to name your computer. If you don't want it to be server, you could have it be Mac Mini. You could have it more descriptive. Whatever you want to put there for a computer name. I'm going to leave it as server for right now. And you can see what it does is it defaults to the host name that it gave us when it started up. Just server.local because I had server as the name of my computer. So it just grabs that and puts a .local at the end of it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change this. And uh, I'm going to change it to uh, my domain name. So if you've registered a domain name, one of the things you might want to do is consider just, just putting something like server in front of it or uh, any, any real suffix that you want to put in front of it. You can put uh, home. You can put whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to put server and then my domain name that I've got registered. Okay, so now I've got that in there. I've got, uh, you know, so you'd put server.example.com or whatever you want to put in there. And that's uh, the, uh, 
the actual example that it gives down here. Again, if you registered a .NET, it would be .NET or .org or whatever. And so I've got that set up. Now, uh, I can change the network address here if I want to. And I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Let me just click Edit. And what this does is takes you just basically into the System Preferences uh, network pane where you can uh, set up your DNS servers and, uh, and set up your IP addresses uh, where you want uh, your machine to connect, if it's with DHCP or with a manual address, manually, all of that. And you could actually put manually uh, in here if you wanted to, and you could set up all of these things manually. Uh, I'm going to leave this alone because I am going to cover how to set up your uh, network configuration uh, later, but it's important that we get our basic DNS set up first. So let me just click uh, Cancel. And so now I've got everything uh, the way I want it, so I'm going to click Finish. And so it says, do you want to set up DNS? So automatically it says, hey, do you, a uh, server can automatically set up a DNS server uh, that resolves to your host name if you want to, uh, so that devices can connect. And so server will then go about filling out the information here uh, to start DNS up for you. Now, what I would say is uh, if you're a home user and you don't have too many things that you uh, need to set up yourself, you don't want to fiddle with DNS, then I would just click the Set Up DNS uh, button here and let it set up. Uh, for those of you that have more technical things that you want to use with DNS, then you would just click Skip, and it's basically just going to create the host name for you. Uh, what I'm going to do for right now is click Set Up DNS so that I let it, uh, let it do that so you can see what it does and what it looks like. And then, like I said, in a future screencast on the DNS service itself, uh, we'll start all over with that so that uh, you can see what it looks like from scratch. So uh, I'm just going to click uh, Set Up DNS right here. And so now you can see it's setting up the computer, it's configuring the network, it's setting up DNS, it's updating services with my host name, so that basically uh, any of my services I have running know that now instead of server.local, it needs to use uh, server.com. And so you can see now it's updating the uh, services with the host name. And once that's done, uh, everything should be set up and ready to go. So I'm going to let that run, and as soon as it's finished, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are. You can see that the host name has been changed uh, to what I wanted it to be. You can see it's left my uh, computer lame name alone as well. Uh, you also notice down here that the DNS has been turned on. And so let's just uh, let's click on that for a second and take a look at it. So you can see that it did uh, set up a primary zone for me. It set up a machine record and a name server record as well as a uh, reverse mapping. Uh, for DNS. Again, for some of you who haven't uh, looked at this before, maybe you uh, have never seen DNS, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, be explaining that when I do the DNS tutorial. But at least this way you know that uh, at least uh, DNS is set up, things are running. Uh, again, uh, you know, your domain names will be able to uh, resolve, uh, which just basically means that uh, DNS takes the numbers and, ter and connects them to the names you use. So like, you know, 10.0.1.3 should go to server.example.com and that those two things are linked. So we'll talk more about that in a, in a future uh, screencast. Uh, but it does tell me that the status is running. It says to set my DNS settings to uh, what my server is. And I'm going to cover that in uh, a future screencast to show you how to do that uh, with your network configuration. Uh, one more thing that we do have, just to show you that the alert system does work, it does give me an alert that says that the host name has been changed. If I double click on it, it just tells me, hey, host name's been changed. want to let you know that. And if you want to go back and uh, you don't want it to be that anymore, you can click Recover and set it back. So I'm just going to click Done. And now that notification is gone. And let's just go back to the main server screen. All right, so now we've got that set up. Uh, one more thing I do want to cover is some of the basic settings. So let's go to the Settings tab here. Uh, on the Settings tab, you can uh, set up a number of things. You can allow remote login using SSH. Uh, and then choose who you want that for. Uh, SSH allows you basically to log into your server through the terminal. And so uh, I, would, I would recommend if you're a home user not to turn that on unless you really know what you're doing or want to use it. Uh, because uh, through uh, when you open up the terminal like that to the internet, that's where a lot of people uh, might try to hack your server. So uh, not that they'll get in if you have a strong password or anything, but it's always uh, a good idea to turn it off if you don't need it. Uh, you can also enable screen sharing and remote management. And so if I just click those, that allows me to install the server app on another computer and be able to log into it. Uh, I'll be able to show you how to do that in a future screencast. And also enable the screen sharing that's built into the server application as well so that you can do uh, screen sharing. Uh, you can also allow uh, remote administration using server. And this is where I would actually be able to uh, install the server app, log into my server, and see everything just like I see here on my server on a remote device. 
And so that's something that you probably want to set up. And then you can enable Apple push notifications, which uh, allow you to push changes to your different devices. And so that's something that, uh, that will enable when we do uh, Profile Manager, but just wanted to let you know that that was here. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can change where your service data goes. If I just click Edit, uh, you can choose to either, either leave it on the server itself or put it on another drive uh, attached to your server. And once you click it, then all your services will stop while it moves the data over. I'm just going to click Cancel. Let me just show you what it moves here by looking at the Finder. Uh, basically what it's going to do on your on your hard drive here under library server all of this data in here with this server folder is what it moves so you really want to uh, be cautious in moving that because that's this is all data that your server needs to run and if you put it on a drive uh, that you may turn off sometimes or isn't always on then you lose access to your services and it causes you problems uh, but for those of you that run other drives 24 7 or maybe you want to do it on another internal drive uh, you can move this server data off of the main drive uh, could come in handy if you've got an ssd that you don't want to fill up and so you want to put that data somewhere else you could do it that way and that would uh, cut down on the amount of space that uh, that server uses for this this type of stuff uh, let me just pop that down and come back here so uh, the final thing here is just storage. It shows your available storage and uh, allows you to kind of take a look at what you've got on your computer and open up different files through file sharing, uh, like I said, which we'll cover in depth at a later screencast. So that gives you an overview of the server tab here uh, and some basic DNS setup as well as some of the basic settings. Uh, we'll go over every one of the other uh, settings and things on the side here in more detail throughout this series, but I just wanted to uh, give you an overview of how to get your server set up and going. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.